witches and wizards of the world! This is the Hogwarts Chaplain coming to you from the Room of Requirement, broadcasting across the globe on the WWN, the Word and Wizard Network. My friends, we returned just last week from our on-the-road journalism trip to America. Our purpose in taking that month-long trip, my friends, was to travel around the capital of that great nation, Washington, D.C., and see the current Muggle president's effects locally and nationally. My friends, the idea was that we would return here to Hogwarts and have more to talk about, more clarity about the issues facing Americans, witches and wizards and muggles alike, who pursue social justice, doing the right thing, loving their neighbor. My friends, we returned to Hogwarts, though, overwhelmed. Frankly, I don't know what else to say about the current muggle president other than I am at this point morally, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, overwhelmed. My friends, while I was in America looking at screens big and small, mobile and analog, every screen seems to have a red banner across the bottom that says, breaking news. Everything, my friends, is breaking news. And in fact, when you see what the news is in any other administration going back decades or maybe even centuries, each piece of news would have been breaking news. But news is breaking. It is breaking the spirit. It is breaking the imagination. It is breaking the hearts of so many people in that country. We sensed, in fact, fatigue, real fatigue among Americans. It's hard to know which issue that we should talk about here on the WWN. Should we talk about the administration's investigations against it? Should we talk about Native American rights? Should we talk about the rights of immigrants and the undocumented? Should we talk about those working at a living wage? or those who seek a living wage? Should we talk about those who are poor, those whose public schools are failing? Should we talk about issues of race, or class, or gender, or pay equity? And what about nuclear weapons? Something that the president refers to sort of offhand and flippantly. Military spending? The EPA? My friends, there is disturbing and breaking news in every one of these areas every hour. Most importantly, though, the news seems obsessed with the trouble that the current Muggle president is in with with, with everyone, and people that work for him, and connections with Russia, and my friends, if you've been following the news, you know exactly what I mean. It's hard to know where to start. And I saw very many Americans just turning off the news altogether, and doing something lovely, like going for a walk, walking a dog, calling a friend. These are good choices in one way, my friends, to, to seek beauty and, and meaning, to work on the relationships right around you. But we have to be careful, all of us, who consume all this toxic, breaking news, not to disconnect. That's a privilege, of course, my friends, to be able to say, I do not care what the breaking news is. Well, what if you're one of the people that's being broken by the news? My friends, there is a moral crisis in America right now, not just because of the things that are going wrong or the things that have been done that are illegal or dangerous or treacherous or traitorous. My friends, a greater problem is that so many Americans are so tired, so confused, so frustrated, so irritated, so much righteous indignation that they've just run out of energy. My friends, this is the saddest development. This current muggle president will eventually be out of office. Maybe sooner, maybe later. But the long-term damage is that the electorate, Americans who have the privilege to step back from the news and go do something else, they have become apathetic. And I understand, I feel that way myself. My friends, this is the news broadcast issue for today. The apathy that comes from people deciding they no longer want to ingest and consume the toxicity of the news. Because it is truly breaking news, and it is truly breaking people's hearts. My friends, the vulnerable people who are the object of the mendacity of the current Mughal president. These people do not have the power or the privilege to turn off the news. They are the news. The environment, water, endangered species. It's not just people who are hurt by the madness coming out of Washington, D.C. So how do we re-energize ourselves? Well, let's turn to the Harry Potter stories first, my friends, to help us understand the predicament in which we find ourselves. And what can happen when we come become disconnected from the news, when we walk away from things that are upsetting, or that get in our way, or that we feel we can't do anything about, when we just decide to sort of go along to get along, just take care of ourselves, take care of our own. 
How bad could that be? We're not actively hurting anyone if we don't engage the political system, if we are not active and energized citizens, right? Just don't hurt anyone. Does it hurt anyone to step back? My friends, a short reading from Professor Rowling's second book in her seven-book series, The Chamber of Secrets. Harry Potter is over at the Burrow with the Weasley family, one of the most loving and fun families in all of the Harry Potter stories. But on this particular day, in this particular passage, Harry learns that there's something called denoming the garden. And he decides to take part. Listen to this brief passage, my friends, of what is involved with denoming the garden. <clears throat> but Harry, who felt wide awake, said quickly, I'll help Ron. I've never seen denoming. That's very sweet of your dear, but it's dull work, said Molly Weasley. Muggles have garden gnomes too, you know, Harry said to Ron. Yeah, I've seen those things. They are gnomes, said Ron. They are a lot like fat little Santa Clauses with fishing rods. But then there was a violent scuffling noise. The peony bush shuddered and Ron straightened up. This is a gnome, he said grimly. Drop me, drop me, squealed the gnome. It was certainly nothing like Santa Claus. It was a small, leathery-looking, large, knobby, bald-headed thing, exactly like a potato. Ron held it at arm's length as it kicked out at him with its horny little feet. He grasped it around the ankles and turned it upside down. This is what you have to do, he said. He raised the gnome above his head. Drop me, said the gnome, and started to swing it in a great circle like a lasso. Seeing the shocked look on Harry's face, Ron added, It doesn't hurt them. You've just got to make them really dizzy so they can't find their way back to the gnome holes. He let go of the gnome's ankles. It flew 20 feet in the air and landed with a thud in the field over the hedge. Pitiful, said Fred. I bet I can get mine beyond the stump. Harry learned quickly not to feel too sorry for the gnomes. He decided to just drop the first one he caught over the hedge. But the gnome, sensing weakness, sank its razor-sharp teeth into Harry's finger, and he had a hard job shaking it off until... Wow, Harry, that must have been 50 feet. The air was soon thick with flying gnomes. See, they're not too bright, said George, seizing five or six gnomes at once. The moment they know denoming's going on, they storm up to have a look. You'd think they have learned by now to just stay put. Soon the crowd of gnomes in the field started walking away in a straggling line, their little shoulders hunched. They'll be back, said Ron, as they watched the gnomes disappear over the hedge to the other side of the field. They love it here. Dad's too soft with them. He thinks they're funny. My friends, the Weasleys are one of the most loving families in all of the Harry Potter stories. Mr. Weasley himself is, is patience and joyfulness and love and fidelity embodied. He laughs, he cries, he's a leader, a pillar of so many lives, including a father to Harry Potter. And yet look at this family. They have turned a habit into torturing living, breathing creatures that can actually speak to them and say, get off me, get off me. They hear them scream as they sail through the air and land with a thud in someone else's field. Harry first feels sorry for them, but then he learns not to feel too sorry for them. And within just a minute or two, he's throwing them 50 feet away, one after another. My friends, this kind of cruelty, and that's what it is, only happens gradually. You just see someone else doing it. And he starts to listen to the Weasleys and not listen to the screaming gnomes. Are there worse things Harry could do, more damage he could do to human beings or to the community than throw gnomes 10 or 15 or 50 feet? Probably. There are greater crimes against humanity than this. But don't miss the point here, my friends. Our favorite loving family makes a habit, almost a game, out of depopulating the garden of its gnomes, knowing that they'll even come back. My friends, this is a perfect example of what can happen when good people just go along to get along. They can wind up taking part in the torture of other creatures. Is this an extreme example for our times? I think it's an important one to reflect on. Because just think of those who are locked up in federal prison right now. 
with ridiculous and unjust prison guidelines that put them there. Sentencing minimums. My friends, there are people all over America who right now are suffering, yelling, get off me. Think about it, my friends. Those people who are being hurt, they are in a system that is hurting them. And we have a muggle president right now who has taken all the oxygen out of the public square and focused all the energy on himself as he sends out mosquito after mosquito, which is our word for the 140 characters that fly out from the current Muggle president 24 hours a day, distracting everyone. My friends, do you remember what normal Muggle presidents are like of either party? They travel around the country and they talk about, what's the word? Issues, race, class, gender, education, immigration. My friends, think about it. When was the last time you saw this current Muggle president reading stories to children in public schools? Or visiting a soup kitchen? What did he do, this current Muggle president, last Thanksgiving? He did not do what the last Muggle president and the one before that did, which is go serve in a soup kitchen. No, he didn't volunteer anywhere. He went to his resort for the whole weekend of Thanksgiving and published the menu for his dinner in all the press. He tweeted out the kind of dessert served that anyone could come to his club if they were members and buy on Thanksgiving. No pictures of the current Muggle president serving anyone. Are those just symbolic pictures, my friends? Is that what you're saying? Whether it was the current Muggle president, whether it was the last Muggle president, Mr. Obama, the president before him, Mr. Bush. Yes, it was symbolic that they were serving meals to people on Thanksgiving or the day before, or working in a soup kitchen, or painting a wall for Habitat for Humanity. But that, my friend, is part of the job of president, to precisely be a symbol of goodness, of what it means to be an American, of what it means to respect the rights and dignities of people. So yes, symbolic action, reading a story to children. Could their teacher read the same story to them in a public school to advocate for reading or eating healthy lunches? Of course, you don't need the president to go there. But our presidents always have, of both parties, they've taken on all kinds of issues that affect the daily lives of people. My friends, when was the last time you saw the current Muggle president at someone else's funeral? Delivering a eulogy, going to church, singing a hymn, going to a Habitat for Humanity site, and nailing something to the wall. My friend, you have not seen these things because the current Muggle president is too busy defending himself. And most of us are so sick of the latest chapter in the novel that is the story of the defense of himself that many of us have turned the news off. So my friends, I end this broadcast by saying, please do not be faint of heart. Do not give up. Do not turn off the news because it is so toxic. Remember, there are people flying through the air. There are systems of oppression, Syst systemic poverty. There are systems right now in place that are hurting the undocumented, that are hurting immigrants, that are hurting women, that are hurting transgender people, or other people in the LGBTQ community. My friends, just pick a vulnerable group of people and you will see that the current Muggle president doesn't go to science fairs, doesn't visit spelling bees or hospitals. He spends time defending himself. Well, you know what? What we all need to do all over the world, my friends, is come to the defense of what is good and right and just in America. We must love our neighbors as ourselves. That is the great scripture that we are going to consider today. Simply this. Jesus says, love your neighbors as yourselves. When you shut off the news, which too often is a story of one more gnome being thrown into the air against its will, used or oppressed by someone else, as those stories are just too painful to hear and we walk away, are we loving our neighbors as ourselves? My friends, that should be our North Star. Should you keep watching the news? How can you love your neighbor as yourself if you don't know what's happening to your neighbor? And if the news is just obsessed with the mosquito from the president of the day, then turn off the news. But don't then retreat. Go to a rally. Make a donation to an organization, to a newspaper. My friends, do something. Visit someone who is shut in. Find people in your own neighborhood in need. My friends, show up. It's okay to turn the news off, but only if we turn on our own souls to love our neighbors. My friends, the current Muggle president seems to move in a pallet only from 
narcissism to nihilism in any given moment. Do not fall into that pattern. My friends, let's not be bystanders to the crisis of the current administration. Let's be active. Let's use our hands and feet and voices. Let's pray. Let's play. Let's work. My friends, that is our mission. Do not be put to sleep by the nightmare of the current Mughal president's disregard, indecency. Be inspired by the founding documents of this country. Think of others, their pursuit of happiness, and your own. In our next broadcast, we will take up specific issues, but for now, my friends, remember, apathy is not okay. We are created in the image of God to love our neighbors as ourselves. That is a passionate journey, and we will continue here at the WWN to feed you on that journey. We sign off saying what we always say here, my friends. Remember, be a seeker, because the truth will set you free.